Yo, what's up guys, Eduardo here with another review and today we are taking a look at a field monitor for your DSLR camera. Also PPKS 9mm short. There's a micro dermal sensor in the grip. It's been coded to your palm print so only you can fire it. This is the Bestview S7 4K field monitor. It is a thin monitor that weighs 371 grams and has a rubberized body that helps give it some grip. On the front, it has a 7 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. The monitor also sports a 178 degree IPS screen, which means that you can look at it from the sides and still see what's on the screen clearly. Also on the front, you have the buttons to toggle through the menu and activate certain features and also the source button to change between HDMI and AV. And at the very end is the power button, which actually puts the monitor to sleep and leaves the power button on. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, well, isn't that going to drain power from the battery? And yeah, it does. But the good thing is that this monitor also comes with an on and off switch, which is located on the back, which shuts down the monitor completely. Also on the back there is a battery slot where you can use either of the included adapter plates, the E6 plate to mount a Canon battery, or the 970 plate to mount a Sony NPF series battery. And then you have a port for connecting the monitor to your computer by USB for any future firmware updates, and also a built-in speaker for when you play back your footage. On the bottom of the monitor there are two HDMI ports, one in and one out for sending a signal to another monitor if you need to. Next to that you have the headphone jack so that you can listen to the audio in real time or during playback, followed by the DCN for AC power from the included power cable, and finally the two AV ports, one in and one out. So going back to the headphone jack really quickly, it is definitely a great feature to have if your camera already does not already have one, but you want to make sure that your camera can actually deliver real time audio through the HDMI connection. Because with me, I have a Canon T5i and I had to find out the hard way after purchasing this monitor and connecting my camera to it. I noticed that my audio levels weren't showing up. There was no activity going on with the volume bar. So I kept messing around and then I realized that I can only monitor audio through playback. So then that means for me or anybody else that has a Canon T5i or perhaps any other Canon Rebel series, you're only going to be able to monitor audio after you've already recorded something. Now luckily, I have Magic Lantern installed, so I can at least see levels on my screen while I'm recording, but I still cannot hear it in real time. So it's definitely something for you to think about. Along with the monitor, you also get a soft sleeve to store the monitor in, a ball mount with a cold shoe adapter, one short HDMI cable, a sun hood frame, a sun hood, a cleaning cloth, and as mentioned earlier, a power cable and two battery plates. I purchased the battery kit off of Amazon since it was the same price as the monitor alone. And so with that, I also got one Sony NPF battery, a battery charger, and one magic arm adapter. This monitor comes equipped with a decent amount of features that are distributed among six tabs. Under the assistant tab, you have monochrome, which allows you to turn the image black and white, red, green, and blue. Under that, you have the option for false color to help you with your exposure. Then you have focus peak to help you see what's in focus, followed by the option to change the color of focus peak between red, green, and blue. Next you have zebra to check if any part of your image is being blown out, followed by histogram to make sure you are not under or overexposing your image, volume bar, and camera mode, which fills up the entire screen with what you would normally see on your camera's LCD screen, but doing this means a drop in the resolution. In the mark tab you have the option to turn on and off the center mark, select a safe area of 80%, 85%, 90%, 93%, or 96%. Selection of a mark ratio of 4x3, 2351, or 1851. Followed by the option to change the mark color between white, black, red, green, or blue. And finally, the option to change the transparency of the overlays. Next up is the image tab, and under here, you can change the video ratio to 16 by 10, 16 by 9, 4 by 3, 235 1, 185 1, or leave it on auto. You can do underscan or overscan, do pixel to pixel, zoom in all the way up to 10 times, flip the image horizontally, 
or vertically, followed by freeze image, and choose the level of noise reduction. Under color settings, you have the option to tweak the brightness of the monitor, the contrast, saturation, hue, sharpness, backlight, and select a color temperature of 5600, 6500, 9300, or a custom one. Then you have the shortcut tab where you can assign each button a feature for quick access. And finally, in the last tab, you will find the option to select the language, change the transparency of the menu, how long the menu display stays on for, adjust volume, reset, and software update. thing that you're going to notice when you turn on this monitor is actually how long it takes for it to fully get going. Almost about 12 seconds. I don't know how it compares to other monitors because this is the first monitor I've ever had, but for me that's quite a bit of a long time to be honest. I'm used to turning off my camera, turning everything off when I'm in between shooting something to save power. So almost 12 seconds for me is a little bit too much to handle when I'm used to everything powering on in less than four. Another thing you will notice is that the monitor does not have a matte screen, but instead a plastic one. So unfortunately that means that reflections are more easily seen. If you use the included sun hood, it does help somewhat indoors, but if you are using this outside during a bright sunny day, I suggest that you bring a shirt or a towel or something to drape over you and the monitor so that way you can completely eliminate all light and reflections so you can view the screen clearly. Because as you can see here when I took it out, it was really reflective. I know that sucks, but you know what doesn't suck? Is how sharp and clear this monitor is. But I find it is very sharp, which makes it easy to see what is in focus so therefore you can pull focus more accurately while viewing a bigger size display than your camera's LCD panel. And speaking of focus, the focus assist on this monitor is not too bad either. Definitely provides you a helping hand if you aren't too sure about what is in focus. Now my reason for going with the best view monitor over other ones on the market such as the Aperture VS2 Fine HD or the Feel World 759 or 760 um, for me, it was one big thing that I kept noticing in all the other reviews I was watching, and that was the lag that those monitors were showing. Now, this monitor has very few videos on YouTube compared to the other ones, so I had to watch those clearly and see whenever people would walk or do something in front of the lens and see how fast it was broadcasted on the monitor. And for me, it looked like it was pretty good. Both Canon T5Is I had here recording a clock, and as you can see in the difference between the seconds, the LCD panel of the T5i to the right is faster than the monitor, but not by that much, to be honest. It's only like a split second almost if you keep looking back and forth. They're kind of on the same pace, in my opinion. But yeah, that was my reason for going with the best view over other monitors on the market, because a lag longer than what this one shows, it would have driven me insane. It wouldn't have been useful for me to do real-time shoots out on location or anything like that, because I just wouldn't have been able to follow along with the action, as well as I should be able to with this one. But all right guys, that's gonna go ahead and do it for this review here today. As always, if you guys enjoyed it, if you liked it, and if you found it helpful, go ahead and give me that thumbs up and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any questions about this monitor that I forgot to answer or something about it specifically that I did not mention, go ahead and comment below and I'll try my best to get to you as soon as possible. But until then, thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you next time. See ya.